you are walking through a time tunnel right now, highlighting computer graphics history in the past 50 years. This time tunnel immersive experience shows where CGI has been and where it is going. The time tunnel is covered by depth sensing camera. Visitors can interact with the projection mapping as well as the LED wall with their body and their hands. Be truly immersed and be part of the computer graphic history. Look at Kitty here. She's like a kid in the playground, having so much fun in this mixed reality experience. I think she is tripping hard right now, need to meditate to calm her sensor down before being overloaded. Welcome to Seagraph 2023 and celebrating its 50th anniversary in the computer graphic with us. At the beautiful Los Angeles Convention Center in Immersive 3D VR 180. In this experience, I will show you some groundbreaking AI and nerve tech like 3D and 6 stop video call in a holographic display, watching the first ever VR video created in 1960 and just got remastered by USC researchers. This is Sensorama, world first VR headset with 3D 120 stereoscopic video, motion chair, haptic controllers, and it comes with a smell bank, which will provide sense in real time. So ahead of its time. We will also walk down the memory lane of VR, check out this VR headset from NASA back in the very early 90s. This is so cool. But first, let's go check out NVIDIA latest AI releases. Hi, my name is Michael from NVIDIA. And here at SIGGRAPH at the eTech floor, we are showing our latest research on AI-mediated 3D video conferencing. So we're showing one-shot neural radiance field method that can lift from 2D to 3D in real time. Our booth here um, has three different experiences. So we break down our demo, demo in three parts. The first part is a 3D selfie. So you take a 2D selfie and we automatically convert it into a 3D image. So then this 3D image is presented on a looking glass display. And um, it's fairly high quality. We run a super resolution pass. You should check it out. The second demo is a 3D live portrait. And what we're doing there is present a streaming pipeline that now uses incoming camera frames and lifts all the 2D camera frames into 3D in real time. This is enabled by an NVIDIA cloud server. So the camera stream is streamed to the server. We run AI inference on an ADA generation GPU. We get the neural radiance field back for each frame and decompress it on the client and render it to a Thrax Zero display. So it runs on the laptop. Our third demo is AI media 3D video conferencing, and there we show a three-way 3D video conferencing application. It uses the same stack as before, but now we stream from multiple cameras, one camera per client, to a cloud server, run the AI inference there, we generate compressed neural radiance fields that can be streamed back to the clients. And on the client, we generate 45 views to get a 3D image on a light field display. We want to create a neural radiance field that we can render from any angle to get a 3D representation on a 3D screen. But we only take a 2D image as input. So our method is special in a way that we can generate 3D faces which are encoded in form of a neural radiance field. Now, our specific representation is called triplanes, and that is a very efficient method to encapsulate a frontal view, side view, and a top view into one coherent 3D volume. And the benefit of that is it's fairly fast to compute. It can run on a single GPU in real time for 30 hertz stream right now. And we con can compress it uh, very well because it has similarities to 2D images, so it allows us to reach very high compression rates for streaming. Uh, hello, I'm Jill Wang, and I'm in charge of AR and mixing products. And this uh, year, we are demonstrating you know, AI-mediated video conferencing solution. With this, 
a world with like photorealistic 3D uh, virtual meetings with maximum engagement is just around the corner. One of the main benefits we're trying to show here over traditional 2D video conferencing is solving one of the long-standing problems of not having good eye contact in 2D video conferencing applications. And when you're looking at a Zoom call or other 2D video conferencing applications all day, at some point you can experience a certain, a certain form of fatigue. And that is a result from just seeing all the, all the members in the call kind of staring at you and you don't exactly know who you're, you should be paying attention to and who's talking to whom because you also don't have a spatial relationship of those 2D representations. With our research, we bring everybody on the call into a coherent 3D space. And that is much more natural, much more how you would talk to people in real life. And we couple that spatialization visually also with 3D spatial audio. And that is another hint of um, knowing you know, who is paying attention to whom and um, bring more immersion into this 3D video conferencing uh, use case. So that will hopefully help to resolve some of those issues that we have with today's software. So for your 3D audio, which is my field, is it Ambisonic Adobe Atmo? What is the tech behind your 3D audio? So right now we're using Ambisonic's renderer and we're rendering from one microphone as input to a stereo speaker system but you could also use headphones and it would probably work even better there. So yeah, Is Ambisonic. I generate Ambisonic or, or, or actually capture Ambisonic? So it's, it's, it's generated Ambisonics from one mono stream. It's not capturing from an Ambisonics microphone right now. Oh, can this full experience can also be a VR headset? We think so. Um, it would be, would be required that you have a camera in the VR headset and there would be some form of AI also necessary for hallucinating the parts of the face that are covered or not visible to the cameras. So it wouldn't be directly compatible, but um, I think there are ways that AI can help with that as well. Definitely, because for NVIDIA, we do have Cloud XR streaming solution. So as long as you are uh, having XR application and we move all the computing power in the cloud or at the edge, so we run on the cloud and server and client architecture. So that means we can push all the application or computing power in the cloud. And for the client side, they can simply use all-in-one VR, HMD, or portable devices like handheld devices. They can still stream like a stereo image uh, from their user end. Yeah, by using either uh, Wi-Fi 6 or uh, 5G networks. What interests me most is Nerf and Instant NGP for VR filmmaking. Thomas from NVIDIA shared some exciting news on Nerf including native support of all MetaQuest VR headsets. You can see your Nerf in VR today using the free Instant NGP. Moreover, NVIDIA is going to use foliated render and AI upscale models to increase the 6 stuff image quality inside VR headset to achieve nearly photo-like quality. It will support 360 camera very soon and full dome fisheye. Here is my good friend James' presentation on Nerf and the possibility from an artist's perspective and integration with social media. My name is James. Um, I'm an implementation engineer, a software engineer. I'm more interested in the post-processing VFX rather than real-time, but real-time is extremely important. Um, and in VR, we have interactive content, and then we also have uh, stereoscopic video, so I can see use cases for both. Um, so if I need to pre-render my videos, that's fine with me. And especially for this presentation on a two-dimensional screen, it works. Um, however, like real-time manipulation of something like this would really be much cooler than a render. Uh, I can imagine something like this would be super important in education or ocean biology. <coughs> and NERFs can really like transport a whole scene to you in photorealistic detail. Um, I can imagine it'd be cool to see this from the perspective of an insect. In VR, you could easily scale the scene up or yourself down to achieve just that. Uh, but maybe you wouldn't want to be an insect around something like this. It's a pitcher plant, and it would eat you. Um, so beyond capturing reality, uh, I find nerf effects very interesting. Uh, this is actually six scenes that were 2D composited in Instant NGP. Uh, here is an early test of some stop motion animation. And 
Here is our very own Thomas Muller, captured at SIGGRAPH 2022 um, with a sort of fractal effect. And this was an extension of instant NGP at the time. And then we took Thomas and composited the same scan of him into a video of myself and Michael for the promo for this panel. So there's a lot of uses for that. Um, I think there's a lot of storytelling potential. This was a, another collab with Michael who will be speaking next. Um, but be careful who you nerf with because they just might turn on you. Um, beyond compositing, there's a whole range of effects we can leverage uh, because of the volumetric format. We can actually bend the camera sensor itself or even bend the rays. Nobody says the camera sensor has to be a flat rectangle, but it probably should be in VR. I can't imagine this would be anything other than disorienting. Um, but here, like you see on the left, there is the, a mock-up of the camera rays, and on the right, you see the, the image rendered in instant NGP. So that's kind of fun. And finally, here's a trick from Demo Scene. So this is Ben Mildenhall. He's the first author on the original Nerf paper. You can see I like uh, nerfing the Nerf researchers themselves. Um, and so it, something like this is actually very performant because what we're doing under the hood is we're just applying a modulo operator to the space and it's, it's repeating it. So you can think of it like a, a bounding box and as you shoot a ray out of the camera, it enters the bounding box and it keeps, it keeps marching, but if it leaves the bounding box, it's basically sampling from the bounding box again. So you just, what you get is this sort of repetitive process of, of resampling from the same nerf. And it isn't a lot slower than just rendering a single nerf. So I, I feel like working with constrained computation environments like VR could benefit from some of the old demo scene techniques like this one. Um, so that's, that's why I'm about leveraging nerfs to uh, leveraging the benefits of volumetric rendering to their maximum potential. Okay, now let's step out of the conference hall and go back to the time turnout to learn more from the creator. Hi, uh, my name is Han Young Kim. I'm from the University of California, Santa Barbara, Media Arts and Technology. Uh, this project is called the Synaptic Time Tunnel. So this was headed by Bonnie Mitchell and Marcus Novak to build and celebrate the 50 years of SIGGRAPH history. So we have a lot of elements that create an immersive environment, including the ground projections, the wall, which consists of multiple layers that represent uh, traversing through 50 years of history in many different ways that consist of many audio and visual elements. Right, so we have, a, we have a lot of sensors in the space to uh, provide interaction, including the ground projections, which are covered by uh, depth cameras that are showing and allow people to interact with the virtual space on the floor as well as the wall. So if you can see on the ground, there are many different ways that you can interact and have fun with the virtual environment that we're creating here. Thank you for watching this immersive experience. There are so many exciting tech to cover and it is impossible for me to cover them all in VR in just one episode. So if you are new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell to stay up to date with us on all things XR and AI. In the next VR experience, we will show you the world's first ever VR film in the Sensorama machine. We are going to time travel back in 1960s and see the origin of 3D VR filmmaking. You really don't want to miss that one. Until next time, stay creative my friends.